Dr. Noren, this is Miss Jane Williams. Hello, how do you do? I'm uh, Dr. Thuwelli. I'm one of the consultants on duty here today. What's going to happen now is Dr. Nagra is going to tell me what you said to him and what he found in your phone with you. And then I'll come back and talk to you and examine you as well in a few minutes. Okay, thank you. See you in a few minutes. Okay, tell me about uh, Miss Williams. So, Miss Williams is a 29 year old lady who's presented with a severe sore throat, some sweat, and malaise over the last two days. She's also come in into a and &E and collapsed with loss of consciousness briefly uh, around 30 or so minutes after arriving. Um, she has been well until last Friday afternoon actually where she developed a sore throat at work. Um, it was relieved by warm drinks and paracetamol but uh, worsened this morning after waking. Um, it was very severe so she's come into a and &E as a result. She's very worried. She remembered uh, being told to report any symptoms, um, for example sore throats, uh, because she's taking carbimazole uh, and that's for a background history of thyroid toxicosis and she should get a white cell um, blood test done and checked. So on arrival to A&E about 30 minutes or so after she got up from, from her seat after being called to the consultation room, felt dizzy, blacked out and fell to the floor. She hit her head onto the floor but roughly one minute later she, she sort of got up and was feeling not too bad. There's no heat or cold intolerance. Uh, she has admitted to sweats and shivering for the past two days. No other skin lumps, no cardiovascular, no respiratory, uh, gastrointestinal or neurological symptoms. As mentioned, the past medical history uh, consists of thyroid toxicosis diagnosed six months or so ago. And that was after she had symptoms such as anxiety, weight loss, uh, and thyroid function tests after showed that they were deranged. So she's taking carbons on is under Dr. Miller at the Heartlands Hospital. Family history, there's significant history of type 2 diabetes and hypertension on her father's side of the family. She's a smoke, uh, she's sorry, a non-smoker, uh, drinks around 10 units of alcohol a week. And she lives currently with a friend who is away at the moment. Medications wise as mentioned, she's taken paracetamol for some of her pain and the carbims of 5 milligrams once daily. So on examination she looks unwell, flushed and tired. There was no lid lag or any jaundice of note. She's pyrexial at 38.5 degrees, pulse is 110, regular, low volume. Heart sounds are normal and there's no murmurs to be heard. Her blood pressure on sitting is 110 over 70. Once she stood up, it went down to 90 over 50, so there's a postural drop there involved. On examination of her chest, the breath sounds are normal, and abdominal-wise, it's soft, non-tender, and no organomegaly. Looking at her throat, she has bilateral swollen tonsils that are red with linear creamy patches, and bilateral tender multiple lymph nodes uh, around her neck, but none in the axillary or groins to be found. Neurologically, she has no neck stiffness and no other focal uh, neurological signs. Her ECG actually shows sinus rhythm. Her chest x-ray is, is fine as well, nothing focal there. We're still waiting on a throat swab, her thyroid function test and a, a monospot, which may take a little bit longer. We do, however, have a haemoglobin, which is normal, 124. Her white cell count is elevated at 19.3. But there aren't any typical, sorry, atypical lymphocytes, nor any, uh, uh, sorry, there aren't any atypical lymphocytes, which sort of suggests that it's unlikely to be a granulocytosis. Her urea and creatinine are elevated, so this may contribute to some dehydration. Urine dip shows uh, one plus glucose uh, and nil else. My, my likely diagnosis is that of probable acute uh, tonsil, uh, sorry, follicular tonsillitis with no agranulocytosis or infectious mononucleosis. And this is backed by the, the, the evidence of the last few days she's had this severe sore throat which is worsening, the large red tonsils and the creamy patches seen on examination, and the fact that she's pyrexial, has increased inflammatory markers, 
including the neutrophils. My differentials also include postural hypertension, secondary to dehydration from sepsis, and this is due to the sudden loss of consciousness after um, standing from a sitting position, and also the fact that she's got uh, a fast heart rate at the moment. Uh, my third differential would be that of dehydration, and this is supported by her tachycardia, her hypotension upon standing, and her increased urea and creatinine on bloods. The thyroid toxicosis is probably well controlled, as there's no evidence of, of real anxiety or weight loss or abnormal thyroid function tests, although we are still waiting for, for the results for this time around. There's no heat or cold intolerance, and there's no tremor or lid lag on examination. Her reflexes are normal and she's on carbimazole which is controlling it. And finally I'd also like to rule out type 2 diabetes and this is backed by the urine dip testing positive for the glucose, her blood glucose also being positive uh, and, and raised uh, and also the family history of type 2 diabetes. So my plan would therefore would be to uh, first of all reassure the patient that this is unlikely to be related to her carbimazole medicine and to start antibiotics quite quickly to try and treat the infection. I'd also like to continue the paracetamol for her other symptoms like the pyrexia. And I believe that because of the evidence supporting dehydration we should uh, start oral fluids and, and encourage her to drink more fluids as well to try and rehydrate her. We should continue the carbimazole because at the moment it seems to be um, um, stable with the thyrotoxicosis. Uh, and I also think that we should perhaps investigate for her raised glucose and perhaps do an oral glucose tolerance test. Um, because she's alone at the moment and her family live quite far away, I think it's, it's an idea to, to contact the family to provide her with further support while she's here. Thank you very much, that was very good. The few little points I'd make, um, of course the differential diagnosis here was between follicular tonsillitis, glandular fever, and eight ground cytosis mm -hmm. due to the pedimazole, although she's been on it for quite a while now, so that's relatively unlikely. Um, you, you said that the um, atypical lymphocytes um, made it unlikely she had eight ground cytosis. I think that was a slip of the tongue. That's right. You yes. meant to say um, uh, that uh, it was unlikely to be glandular fever. Um, and the fact that the white cells were raised, of course, makes it confirmed that it wasn't eight ground cytosis. And the other point I would make is that you said that uh, you had a differential diagnosis mm -hmm. of possible hypertension and dehydration. Well, I would have called those additional diagnoses, sure. which were the consequences of the infection. Yes. So, um, right. Um, another point that concerned me is that she lives on her own at the moment because her friend is away mm -hmm. and her parents live 200 miles away. So they're not going to get you very quickly right. to help her out. Uh, and because she still is dizzy and possibly hypertensive, uh, I think perhaps we should consider bringing her in and giving her IV fluids. Okay. And then when she's uh, uh, on her feet again and feeling better, then we could consider sending her home or perhaps her parents can take her away for a few days uh, when they eventually get here. Okay. Right, well that was very good. I'm sure that after I've seen her, that my diagnoses and the supportive findings and evidence mm -hmm. for my diagnosis is going to be very similar to yours on this occasion. So let's go and see her then. Okay, thank um, you.